momentum? The momentum is really growing. Yeah. And, and I, I mean, I've just been, you know, sharing and posting as much of ecocide stuff as possible. Yeah. You know, and I remember the last hug I had with Polly, actually, I said to her, Polly, I think I'm going to have to get really activist. And she said to me, gave me the best hug ever mm. and said, mm. Mel, we'll look back and think we weren't activist enough. And it was so powerful, yeah. so freeing, actually. Yeah. Um, because the there, there are two key change makers here. You and I, and everyone who cares about the earth, we are the ones who can be change makers. That's the first category. So anyone who is already in the business of being an earth protector, they've committed themselves to recognizing that Actually, their mission in life is to help protect this earth because ultimately this is about protecting the lives of human and non-human, uh, the life of the earth itself, yeah. which is why we called it Mission Life Force. Yeah. I, but this is about how we participate in this world and it really does not matter whether or not you're a single mum scraping a living together you can still do a lot to help bring this forward. And indeed, signing up uh, to be an Earth Protector in Law with the Mission Life Force campaign, you are helping and enabling, because you care, you can enable those small island developing states, their heads of states, their ministers, their delegates, and the lawyers that we can bring forward to then go into the International Criminal Court and get this law put in place. So the true change makers in this are you and me? A lot is people are saying, well, we know what you're against. What are you for? We feel that ecocide law is the thing that we can be for, right? Because it actually has that potential to, to unlock everything. To, exactly. It's it's like it's an unlocker. It's a if you, almost a passcode. Or I mean, Polly used to describe it as a trim tab, which is an expression that Buckminster Fuller used, and he, he actually said, you know, call me the trim tab. You know, a trim tab is is apparently this, this the mechanism on a on a big ship that you move which then turns the rudder which then turns the ship and you know from our perspective that's what ecocide law is capable of. Um, because the problem is and, and in my report I've literally looked at all the international frameworks all the government policies that exist and although there's no lack of binding agreements and sort of voluntary initiatives mm. to manage not only the plastic crisis but the interlinked climate crisis and ocean acidification crisis and all the rest of it yeah. um, mm. All the plans and strategies are fragmented and uncoordinated. Um, and some of them cover part of the problem. Some of, most of them, you know, don't take into account everything. So large parts remain largely unregulated. Mm -hmm. um, they're very limited in scope. Um, address waste disposal mostly only. Um, continue to absolve the producers of their responsibilities. Um, and don't measure and monitor the progress made at all. So actually they're all of limited effectiveness, effectiveness specifically because they're voluntarily not legally binding. Yeah, yes. So my conclusion, having looked at all of those, mm. <coughs> which was pretty substantive, was ecocide is the only one on the table. Yes, that that has a possibility of, 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 of achieving something and in time. Yeah. Because, you know, if we look to try to just draw up a new classic agreement policy now, we're at the place now where climate change negotiations were in 1992. We haven't got time. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it is absolutely the only one whether that can, you know, and that's what's great, the headway they've made recently, mm -hmm. as in just trying to, to rewrite it so it falls under the, you know, um, the criminal court. That's where the yes. problem is. <clears throat> yeah, that's right. Um, I, I think that's doable, and I think a lot of leaders are waking up to that. Yes, so that's, that's a cause of great optimism, though, isn't it? I mean, that, that is actually... That's the well, good news. Yeah. This is such a crucial time. <laughs> it is such a crucial time. And we were talking 10 years maximum, you know, yeah. and that keeps diminishing as we speak. Yeah. You know, so um, I think no matter what, talking of going back to silos, no matter what organisation or whatever their message is or their catchphrase or their whatever, 
we have to have some overarching one, and Ecoside is the only one that seems to do it, to do it for me. Yeah. Because all of those underlying messages, ocean acidification, blah, 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 sewage, you know, piling into our rivers in the UK at the moment, um, all fall under Ecoside. Mm. It's the only one, that I think, that can do it. Yeah, I agree, totally. <coughs> just, just, just a wrap.